Okay, let's take a look at this interesting little problem here. And the problem is i to the 29th power is equal to what? Hmm, okay, now I'm um, saying that 10% of you can get this right. Well, maybe more of you can get this right, but let's just see how well you understand imaginary numbers. And take a moment and maybe pause the video and put your answer into the comment section and see if you can get this right. Now, of course, after I get done explaining this, a lot of you are going to be like, oh, okay, now I, I understand. I could have I could have gotten this right. But uh, based upon your current math knowledge right now, can you do this problem? Okay, this was a quick uh, math quiz, all right, or a little pop quiz. Could you get this right? You should be able to get this right. And uh, this is really kind of at the maybe Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly the pre-calculus level of mathematics. But you're going to need to know some of your basic algebra, algebra concepts and properties to kind of figure out uh, the path forward with this problem. Now, let's talk about I real quick. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about imaginary numbers. So are we going to take this I and multiply it by itself uh, 29 times, right? Is that what we're going to do? Hmm. Well, that would be pretty arduous, and that would probably be uh, one of the worst YouTube videos um, <laughs> I ever made to kind of see all this work being done. So no, this is not going to be what we're going to be doing. Okay, so we're going to be doing something a little bit more interesting, and uh, you're going to want to remember uh, the approach to, way, to the way I solved this problem because it's going to come up especially for those of you that are in these more advanced math levels. So I'm going to get to all of this in a, uh, in a second. Again, if you think you can solve this, you know, don't go on to, you know, your computer and go search it out, you know, or go to your calculator. Just take a piece of paper and pencil. This will probably take you all of about no a minute to do. But put your answer in the comment section and we'll compare notes in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are frustrated in mathematics for whatever reason, maybe uh, math is not your subject and you just hate math and you're like, I hate math. I don't want to do it. Um, and you are struggling, your grades re reflect how much you dislike math. Well, that's not good. And I'm, he I'm here to tell you that you know, if you um, are frustrated with math, we need to get your mind in a different way. Okay, so what you're going to need is uh, more instruction and clear instruction so you can understand this stuff and start relaxing about this. Okay, so anyone can be successful in math. You just got to really um, take a different approach. All right, and I've been teaching math for decades and I really break things down in small bite sized pieces so you can understand, you know, uh, all the steps involved to, to doing even more complicated math. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in mathematics, I can help you uh, be successful in your respective math courses. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam. I can go on and on and on, literally, um, you know, that would be pretty boring. But you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. Just go to my website and check out my full test prep catalog. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool uh, math program. And if you need some notes, I'm going to leave links to uh, my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want great math grades, uh, you got to take great math notes. Okay, this is critical to your success in mathematics. Okay, so let's get into this problem. I to the 29th power. Again, we're not going to multiply i by itself 29 times. Now, that would be very difficult. Uh, what we're going to do is use all of our knowledge. Okay, if you're at this level studying complex numbers, okay, this is what this is, right? And we're talking about complex numbers, things like a plus b i, stuff like this, uh, 2 plus 7 i. This is a, a full complex number. This is the real component. And this is the... Uh, imaginary component right here okay now this is a whole another discussion so what we're doing is just working with this imaginary comp uh, component and we're taking i to the 29th power so you definitely need to understand um, the complex number system and how to work with complex numbers but let's just do some basic review and I'm going to show you kind of the key to unlocking this problem right so we have i to the 29th power What's this? Uh, what's the answer going to be? Well, first of all, let's just go back and review. What is the definition of i? Okay. Well, i is the square root of negative one. I don't want to get into a whole other 
side discussion about the complex numbers, but if you're studying complex numbers, you should know this, okay? This is the definition of i. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so in other words, when we're dealing with taking the square root of uh, like a number like negative 16, we cannot do this problem in the real number system. So we're going to have to work within the complex number system. And the complex number system, again, you know, we're dealing with complex numbers, a plus b i. We have to understand this imaginary component, and this is really the beginning of it. Okay. Now, again, I'm kind of leaving a lot of stuff out, but this is the whole, you know, uh, uh, bigger picture in terms of working with uh, little problems like this, like i to the 29th power. All right, so, but let's take a look at what i squared would be. Well, i squared, I would just take this i and I would square both sides. I would get i squared. So if I do that, I'm going to get i squared and the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1. Okay, so i squared is equal to negative 1. You should know this, all right? Now, how about i cubed? What is i cubed? Well, it would be, let's go back to our uh, i. Okay, i is equal to... Uh, square root of negative 1, so it would be uh, square root of negative 1 times uh, negative 1. But if you really look at this, okay, uh, we can kind of break it down this way. And I want to uh, put it like, we're going to want to use our um, uh, properties of powers and exponents. So here we have i to the first times i squared, okay. If I multiply these together right here, I'm going to get i cubed. So what's i to the first or i, okay, that's the square root of uh, negative 1. And i squared is negative 1, so negative of a square root of negative 1 is a negative i, okay? So i squared is negative 1 uh, times i, which is i squared times i is i cubed. So either way, you know, whether I explain it this way or this way, hopefully you can see and understand that i cubed is negative i. All right, well, how about i to the fourth? Well, i to the fourth, I can look at it as i squared times i squared. Again, you're going to need to know how to deal with with uh, the powers of properties and of exponents. So like a to the m times a to the n, if the bases are the same, I am going to add the exponents. So that's a to the m plus n. So i squared times i squared, the bases are the same. So I just add these and I get back to four, i to the fourth. So what's i to the fourth? Well, i squared is what? It's negative one, right? That's what i squared is, so negative one times a negative one. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. Okay, so um, by looking at these first four powers of i, i to the first, second, third, and fourth, this should be kind of a little bit of a clue on how we can manipulate and rewrite uh, i to the 29th powers using um, our knowledge of uh, powers and exponents, or right? using our uh, stuff that we learned in like basic algebra. So this is what you want to do, okay? You want to rewrite i to the 29th power in a way that you can use this information right here. So I want to, uh, I'm kind of giving you a hint. I want you to think about this, like, hey, how can, you know, how could you do this? Pause the video and think about this for a second. Play around with it and see what you come up with before I show you the solution. But I'm going to show you the solution right now. So if you're not ready uh, to see it, go ahead and pause the video. But let's take a look at it right now. And here is the trick, okay? There's different ways you can approach this, but this is probably the easiest way. So we have i to the 29th. Let's rewrite this, okay, using uh, powers of i's and using properties of exponents. So I can write i to the 20, 29th as i squared to the 14th power. Remember, there is a property a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n. Let me give you an example. 2 cubed to the 4th power is the same thing as 2 to the 12th. Okay, because 2 cubed to the 4th is, I'm going to go 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? I'm going to do this four times, and I'm going to um, have 2 to the 12th power. Again, basic algebra here, right? So, but we have to be very kind of like, um, you know, imaginative when I'm using these powers. I don't want to go i to the 14th squared. That's not really helping me out. I want to start with something I know, i squared. So let's do this this way, i squared to the 14th. Both of these will give me to the 28th power, right? But if I use i squared, you're going to see 
how beneficial that is. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, focus in again on how to set this up. So i squared to the 14th is i to the 28th, but I need i to the 29th, so we have to multiply that by another i, or i to the first, because I want to add in exponents, 28 plus 1 is 29. So if you understand that these two things right here are equivalent, i squared to the 14th plus i is equivalent to i to the 29th, you can kind of see right here, well then, now we can really unlock this problem by working with i squared to the 14th. Okay, let's go back here, i squared to the 14th times i. Well, we just talked about what i squared is, all right? i squared, let's go back up here and review, whoops, i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so let's replace that in. Okay, this i squared right there. We'll put a negative 1 in for i squared to the 14th times i. So now we have to figure out what negative 1 to the 14th power is. So how can I do that? Well, you want to think about um, just patterns, okay? How about negative 1 squared? What is that equal to? Negative 1 times negative 1. That's a positive 1. All right, so let's put parentheses here just to be very explicit about it. How about negative 1 cubed? Well, that would be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So that's going to be a positive times negative. That's going to be negative 1. So what you're going to see here is that even powers of this negative 1 is going to result in a positive 1, and odd powers of uh, raising this negative 1 to an odd power is going to leave us with a negative 1. So what do we have right here? Okay, you could do more of these little trials to see the pattern. Well, this is even. So negative 1 to the 14th is going to leave us with a nice positive 1 times i. So 1, positive 1 times i is simply i. So the answer is i to the 29th is i. Okay, so how many out there did this problem without looking? You just fully remembered how to do all this stuff. Well, if that is the case, I must go ahead and give you an awesome happy face with a good old 1984 flat top haircut, A plus, 100%, and a job well done, okay? Um, oops, I got to fix up that flat top. That bothered me. I used to enjoy wearing that haircut. That was an awesome haircut. But anyways, um, nice work. Now, if uh, uh, you didn't under, if you understood now, if, now if you understand how to do this problem now, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, but you didn't kind of get the approach to solve this problem, that's good too. Okay. Again, you know, I'm not saying, uh, when I say like 10% of the people get this right, what I'm talking about is 10% of the people uh, that are at these uh, levels of mathematics would remember how to do this. Okay. After a while. But all of you out there are capable of doing this problem, okay? But you're going to have to remember a lot of your basic algebra skills. Math is cumulative, so you cannot forget all the other stuff that you learn in mathematics, okay? Especially things with uh, powers and exponents. They come into play so frequently in these more uh, advanced math courses. You're going to have to use your imagination. And there's a couple other ways we could approach this problem as well. So if you got this problem right and you use a different um, approach, well, nice job as well. Okay, as long as you can justify your work, really that's what, uh, you know, I'm looking for as a math teacher. But uh, anyways, if this video was helpful in some small uh, way, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That helps me out in a big way. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math, I'm talking like arithmetic uh, type of stuff all the way up to calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of my content. If you like my teaching style, I make these videos for you. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.